It's 3 a.m. And I'm creating concentric circles on my torso as the day slips off my skin. Layer lotion and shea butter like black tautology. Logical necessity. And it is. Reaching from my back, I graze past my ribs and... I remember. The reason I got my tattoo down my side when I was 19, I knew my family would never see it. I grew up with rules about how I could present myself to the world. No crop shirts, no shoulders, shorts and skirts down to the tip of my longest finger. No family business out of children's mouths. Finite and absolute, my family lived in the shade of a body of logic that meant mostly covered in a way that made me wonder how bodies and truth could be met. I began to wonder. It's just mine. It's 5 p.m. And I'm walking with my mom in the neighborhood park. It's warm and I wear just enough to let my skin taste the sun. We run our hands over bare bark and notice the scars left from past storms and the rings of a tree trunk after it's been felled. She holds up a pine cone and shouts. Fibonacci! center of video counting the scales on the pine cone, showing that they're usually in some combination of numbers from the Fibonacci sequence. I think it's significant that the Fibonacci sequence starts with zero. A conceptual void as the basis for a pattern prolific in nature. I think it's significant that the pine cone is often shaped like the tree it fell from. I bend to stretch and I see my stretch marks lattice around my hip bone. And I remember school track practice in the spring when we slipped off pants and traded them for Nike Temple shorts that curved up the thigh. None of the other athletes had stretch marks like mine. The kind that come from growing too much. Too much. Too soon. Too soon. It's 8pm! And I'm sitting on the cool tile floor in my mom's kitchen. I close my eyes and imagine folding ceramic squares like handkerchiefs. Pressing them into some form not defined by Euclidean space. I realize I have only ever found peace searching for power in this place I create when my voice is flattened. So less than a sound wave, less than energy, less than matter. And I am made more theoretical than tangible in this space, this mental room I constructed to explore the idea of being nothing. I would become a god. I could form my mouth around the edges of everything and swallow universes whole, snagging the corners of my lips on mountains, be burnt by suns as they became a part of me. In this vacuum devoid of warmth and matter, my body is inconsequential. Everything can be anything. So I could dream of being made into something more. I could follow the outlines of every person I've ever been along their edges, connect them on notes, to spell my name out over and over until I look like poetry, look like hope in the form of a fragile. A never-ending pattern, infinitely complex and self-similar. Less fracture and more part of a whole. There's a conceptualization of fractals that implies that an infinite fractal curve fills space more efficiently than an ordinary line. I tell myself this means I can't compress more of me into this existence. Concentrated essence Undiluted hope